Hello and welcome. Designers need to have a good grasp of all types of materials, so that when they decide on a particular material choice, that's based on sound knowledge about what the material is capable of. Within woods, within DNM, there are three categories. The categories are softwoods, hardwoods, and manufacture boards. And in this video, we'll discuss all three types of wood. So to start with our softwoods, as the name suggests, softwoods are much softer than hardwoods. They're able to take impacts less well. In many ways that's down to how fast they grow. Softwoods become fully grown after maybe only about 20 years. The growth rings, as we see when we cut a log, are quite far apart. This means that as they take the hit, the growth rings almost become like shock absorbers. The shock travels further through the piece of wood because the growth rings are further apart. If we turn our log into planks, like lumber, we can see these growth rings on the ends of the wood. What happens here is that occasionally, if they're not dried properly, or depending on the cut of the wood, wood can warp. The warp is the, the growth rings themselves actually pulling the plank into a curve, following the growth rings themselves. There's two types of softwoods that you need to be familiar with, and they are red pine and spruce. Again, they take maybe 20 years to become fully grown meaning that they're that bit um, cheaper than hardwoods, considerably cheaper in, in fact. Hardwoods take about 200 years, so maybe about 10 times as long to get to uh, fully grown. The growth rings are much tighter packed, so if we think about that impact resistance again, the hardwood is much more able to take impacts because the growth rings act as those shock absorbers. And because they're so close together, the actual impact has less where to go. You know, it can't travel as far. So hardwoods are really useful when we're looking for um, the wood to have impact resistance. But because they take 10 times as long to grow, they are far more expensive. In terms of our hardwoods, we once again try and remember this using uh, some visual techniques. We have our little castle with a moat going all the way around and the drawbridge down. The, the moat itself is the word that we need to remember when we're thinking about hardwoods. Moat stands for mahogany, oak, ash and teak. And these are woods that you might already be familiar with. So when we think about these hardwoods, we think about uh, the drawbridge itself and what that needs to be able to withstand. The drawbridge itself needs to be able to withstand uh, high impact from horses galloping across. It also is outside all the time because it is a door. All four of these woods would be suitable for use as the drawbridge. And moat and our little picture here helps us remember those hardwoods themselves. There's another one that we need to remember though, which is beach. We imagine ourselves building sandcastles at the beach and digging a moat around. So those hardwoods again, mahogany, oak, ash, teak and beech. Interestingly though, one of them is considered to be particularly bendy and that's ash. We draw a little um, archer standing at the top of the castle and we imagine that his bow is made out of ash. It's an extremely bendy hardwood. Moving on, again, we have a visual technique for this one, and it's your manufactured boards. Manufactured boards are, are called that because uh, they, they aren't trees. They begin life as trees, but then uh, through various processes, they end up uh, being man-made boards. We have a little saying, which is manufactured boards are cheap, handy, and plentiful. 
And these are some of the properties that we can apply to the manufactured boards themselves. They're far cheaper than hardwood. They're handy from the point of view of they can now come in a wide range of sizes. And plentiful means it's very easy to get your hands on these. You can get MDF, for example, at B&Q or local stores very, very easily. At the top of the chain, we have plywood. Uh, is able to be bent into interesting shapes, has excellent impact resistance. Remember the little hammer hitting the, um, the kind of piece of wood. And then similarly, it's got excellent water resistance, which is the only one of the manufactured boards to claim that. It's the only one that you would use if water's involved. Chipboard and MDF in the middle there. Um, MDF itself is really good for painting. It's a very smooth uh, surface, which means that it takes uh, paint very well. Chipboard is made up of tiny little chips all glued together. Nice thing about chipboard is that you can actually uh, stick what's known as veneers over the top of it. Veneer is a very, uh, very thin section of things like hardwoods to give the appearance of, um, you know, say mahogany, but in actual fact, it's chipboard with a very, very thin layer of mahogany over the top of it. Much, much cheaper, but still gives you that nice kind of mahogany look. And finally, um, hardboard at the bottom. Hardboard uh, sounds like cardboard, and to be honest, it shares similar properties. It's a very, very weak manufactured board. Uh, we tend to find it in the backs of things like wardrobes, where you have one nice smooth side, uh, which would be in contact with your clothes, and the other kind of fuzzy, horrible side, which would be against the wall. So very, very cheap, comes in really large sheets, as do all of the manufactured boards. The key thing with hardboard though, and this goes for chipboard and MDF as well, is that they really do not like water. So you would never select uh, one of those manufactured boards other than plywood if it was going to come into contact at any time with water. The veneer, like chipboard has, um, might offer some resistance to water, but not masses. Okay, so that's everything in a nutshell that you need to know about wood with D&M. Okay, thanks for watching.